Hey, this is Dr. Anthony Cave, a Stanford and Harvard trained, board certified anesthesiologist and integrative medicine specialist. And let's talk about what happens to your anxiety when you're under anesthesia, like in an operating room here. Anxiety still happens in your body even when you're unconscious under anesthesia. It can increase the risk of complications for surgery and it can block your success in life outside this operating room. Like if you have generalized anxiety disorder or have ever had a panic attack, you know what I'm talking about. To understand what anesthesia does to your anxiety, you first have to understand anxiety in your brain, and it's actually very simple for most patients. Number one is that anxiety is simply the difference between what you want to do and what you think you can do. So for example, if you want to get a job promotion, but you don't think you can talk to your boss, that uncertainty causes anxiety. Number two is that your brain operates by being lazy and by wanting control. Seriously, that's it lazy and wanting control. That's why we are so susceptible to get rich quick schemes because our brain wants to have control over our income and doesn't want to work for it. And it can also cause anxiety and panic attacks when it tries to control a problem by doing what it does easiest, which is ruminating and perseverating, trying to solve a problem by thinking about solutions but not knowing if it can do them. And that can spiral out of control into anxiety and maybe a panic attack. We see it here in the operating room all the time because patients are uncertain about what's gonna happen to their body under surgery and they wanna control their body. And it's fascinating that anesthesia totally disrupts your brain's sense of control and its sense of being lazy. So check out what happens to your brain with anesthesia. When you're awake, if you want that promotion, but you don't know if you can talk to your boss about it, your brain will do anything it takes, even ruminating into an anxious spiral because you value that promotion and your brain wants to control that outcome. With anesthesia on board, your sense of control really slips away. It depends on the dose, and with high enough doses of anesthesia, your brain will even stop caring to breathe. That's why anesthesia, pain medications, anxiety medications, and alcohol can lead to tragic deaths. So anesthesia forces you to rethink your values and what you care to control in the first place. On top of that, it also is a very low energy state because you're literally just chilling there, not caring about what needs to be done. That can obviously be dangerous taken to an extreme, but you can see that anesthesia can break that cycle because you're not caring anymore to control situations and you're already in a very chill, low energy state. Another way of saying that is that the lowest energy state is achieved without anxiety or worry. And the same can go for meditative states and for psychedelics. The brain wanting to be lazy doesn't mean that you're lazy. It means that the brain can achieve a low energy, easy state by doing what it does easily, which is ruminating and perseverating. So your brain is psyching itself out because as it's trying to control a situation, it's spinning out of control itself. So what about being asleep? How is that different than being under anesthesia? Entirely different. Have you ever tried to fall asleep but feel that your brain is still racing? Maybe ruminating and thinking about solutions to problems during the day? How do I talk to my partner? How do I talk to my boss? No matter how exhausted your body is, your brain is still trying to solve these problems to gain control over the things that you value. And once again, the lowest energy state is going to be perseverating and ruminating. It's what our frontal cortexes do best. Sometimes it works to solve problems, but when it spins out of control, it can lead to anxiety, worry, and panic attacks. And then how about a meditative state? What happens to your anxiety then? A deep state of meditation can help us restructure our values so that we change what our brain is trying to control in the first place. And with enough practice, a meditative state can actually become a low energy state for the brain so that the lazy brain can actually be a more meditative brain instead of a brain that's constantly trying to solve problems by ruminating and perseverating. So when does your brain fall into these traps of trying so hard to be lazy and have control? It's when you're hungry or lonely or bored or frustrated or angry. When you're in these low mood states, your brain is especially susceptible to try to be very lazy and try to control the situation all at the same time. The next time you're in one of those low mood states, even without anesthesia or psychedelics, you can dissect your thoughts to figure out what problem your brain is trying to solve. How is your brain trying to go in that low energy state? And with enough practice and preemptive action, you can actually abort one of those worry cycles and prevent the panic attack before it ever happens.